Hello and welcome to Jay's Marketary for Thursday, February the 25th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios. Therefore, what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. Economic data that we got out today, we're starting to get these uh, GDP numbers, uh, gross domestic product, and uh, over in Great Britain came in at 0.5% right in line with expectations, uh, really showing no inflationary aspects at all, which is another reason why I've talked about why the uh, Fed should not be raising rates right now. If there's no inflation, there's no real reason to start increasing rates, just trying to staff that off. Uh, but anyway, going forward, their final uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, was slightly lower than expected, 0.3 versus 0.4, and their core CPI was right in line at, at 1%. So uh, then we had here in the United States, core durable goods numbers came in much better than expected at 1.8% versus 0.2% expected, and uh, unemployment claims was uh, at 272,000. We also got the natural gas storage, which as you can see right here, came in at a hundred or a drawdown of 117 billion cubic feet so uh, that was just slightly under what they were expecting so the, as you can see natural gas still continues to slump down it is in a bear market and uh, for all intents and purposes it looks like natural gas could be free sometime moving forward the overall market isn't really uh, jumping on this better than expected durable goods numbers that we got here in the United States. We did push off of the lows for the most part, but uh, the reason why I think there's a bit of a uh, dark cloud over this market, for one, we are in a bear market and looking at not such a great economy, but two, the uh, Chinese Shanghai Composite Index was down over 6% overnight. So that's weighing heavily, I think, on the market right now. As you can see here, the NASDAQ forward slash NQ is uh, down almost 10 points on the day after a massive rally yesterday. We were down almost 60 points yesterday and then just completely blew the doors off to the upside. Same thing happened in the E-mini S&Ps. We're slightly higher in the E-mini S&Ps on the day, uh, but lower on the day from where we opened, up just a point, for, so uh, unchanged for all intents and purposes. Keep in mind that 1937 area that I've been talking about as resistance uh, is starting to build the value area low right here at the 1939 area. So that this is a massive uh, uh, resistance area from 1937 to 1947. So 10 points of resistance for the bulls to try and push through. The bears have really been defending that lately. We've talked about this. We're gonna see a lot of volatility, I think, going forward for the next year. But uh, having said that, we've seen this big volatility spike. I think we'll settle down for a little bit. It's a good time to put on iron condors, I believe, and uh, even iron butterflies in that regard. Uh, let's look at the daily for the e mini S&Ps right here. Uh, Breakdown, as you can see, pretty uh, wild ride today, even just from the highs to the lows, just uh, 10 points higher, 10 points lower, and really a battle of the bulls and the bears. Uh, so in that regard, I put on uh, an iron butterfly. And the reason why I did this is because we have a high implied volatility right now with all this market gyration. The volatility is really staying uh, rather bid. So it's a good time to put on some of these iron condors uh, and even the iron butterflies when you don't really have a market direction uh, assumption. Uh, in that regard, I think that we're going to have some wild rides in here, but pretty much stay in line with where we are right now unless something else changes. Uh, but I am still uh, overall net bearish on my position. I'm net delta short for the most part. Uh, so I decided to put on a neutral strategy because I want to keep my 
uh, portfolio the way it is. And I went into the SPY because I'm getting so much premium for these. So I did the April 2031, sorry, uh, the 203, 193, 183, Iron Condor. Now what that is, is I bought the 203 calls, sold the 193 calls, and then I again sold the 193 puts, and then for protection bought the 183 puts. And I was able to collect $7.15. Now that's a lot of credit to get. It's hard to capture all that and take that to expiration. Something like an Iron Butterfly, uh, I usually try and collect somewhere between 30% uh, of my max profit on that. So uh, the reason being is because I don't like to hold anything all the way to expiration. I've talked about this in several different webinars that there's a lot of things that go on uh, towards the end of the month or the end of that uh, option cycle that really cause especially the Iron Butterflies to uh, hold on to value and maybe even increase in value in those last several days just because of the gamma risk and everything else that goes into those. So uh, this I'm going to look to take off rather quickly if I get maybe 30% of my max profit. So, you know, maybe $2.50 on that. So keep your eyes out for that. Friday's webinar, we're going to go into detail as to how to build this strategy out, what I'm looking for, for this type of strategy, how much I'm going to collect, when I'm going to take it off, and what type of environments we're going to be looking for for these strategies. It's not a strategy I put on very often. I may put this strategy on five, uh, five or ten times an entire year. So uh, everything's got to kind of line up for these strategies to really uh, be implemented into my portfolio. And I'll talk about when that environment arises and how to take advantage of that. So uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Go to ProTraderStrategies.com and sign up for that. And if you can't take that, take it easy.